Every year before the onset of the monsoon, a strange phenomenon occurs on the west coast of India. Black-colored oily masses, widely known as star balls, wash up on the shores of Gujarat, Goa, Maharashtra, and Karnataka. Star ball basically it is a product of an oil spill that occurs in the marine environment. As soon as oil spill on the sea, it undergoes various physical, chemical, and biological processes, which we call it as weathering processes. Means a portion of the oil will disappear due to these processes. The remaining oil mixes with sea water and forms emulsification. This emulsification actually in semi solid form. So the winds, currents, and turbulence at sea surface breaks this emulsion into smaller pieces. These smaller pieces further absorb the suspended particulate matter that is available on the sea surface and eventually form as a thaw balls. So these thaw balls generally we see along the west coast of India during April to September, especially uh, pre monsoonary monsoon season. On the coast of Maharashtra, Shonak Modi has been documenting the presence of tarball since 2017. He is building a crowdsourced database to create awareness among the public and authorities that tarball occurrences on India's west coast are not isolated or one-time events that deserve attention only before the monsoons. I have been reading and hearing about tarballs in Mumbai ever since I was a kid. I've lived in Juhu all my life and I've always heard that monsoon brings this in. But it's it's, but it has been normalized to such an extent that nobody bats an eyelid once it happens. I have read headlines saying that there were 16,000 tons or 8,000 tons of tar balls being removed from Juhu Beach, and that's an unfathomable number to me. Uh, people walk barefoot, and people don't really realize that this is oil or this is these are tar balls, and these can be harmful. But what makes India's west coast particularly vulnerable to oil spills? There could be various factors. The National Institute of Oceanography conducted a study in 2019 along Goa's coast. It confirmed that the tarball samples collected in May 2017 along the state's beaches matched oil fingerprints from an offshore oil field over 150 kilometers off the west coast of Mumbai. Here in NIO, we have used a multidisciplinary analysis. For example, chemical fingerprinting and Lagrangian trajectory modeling and remote sensing of the oil spill margin. So when these three different analyses combined, we call it as a multidisciplinary analysis. So using these three multidisciplinary analyses, we have identified the source of the tar bugs along the west coast of India. And so far, based on our studies, uh, majorly we have found only two sources. One is uh, the oil spills that occurs due to uh, ships or shipping operations. And the second major source is the oil spills that, occur, that occurs in the vicinity of the oil fields. These are the two uh, major sources that occur in the uh, west coast of India. NIO study called for routine and periodic monitoring of oil spills along India's west coast to protect the marine environment from oil pollution. The Minister of Environment and Forest and Climate Change, in collaboration with the uh, Indian Coast Guard and also Pollution Control Board, Central Pollution Control Board, we are going to study. Uh, broadly that what are different kind of uh, sources for example uh, uh, ship accidents or uh, oil spill accidents or ship leakages with respect to each source we need to prepare a standard operating procedures that we are going to do that and also we are going to frame a uh, administrative and uh, frameworks for each nodal agencies and their responsibilities this is the first time we are going to do with the help of these uh, other agencies while an effective solution is yet to be found, the continued presence of tar balls along the west coast is alarming and poses a risk to the marine environment and human health. This is despite India being a signatory to the Marpol Convention that aims to eliminate marine pollution caused by ships and their activities. The marine ecosystem, um, pelagic and uh, benthic marine organisms, uh, mammals, uh, plants like coral reefs, mangroves, Everything will be under stress due to this uh, lot of hydrocarbon present in the soil. This can uh, this can affect the whole marine ecosystem. When it comes to the humans, so when we uh, this some of the hydrocarbons are very volatile. That means it, it emits like gases. 
So when we are there mm-hmm. surrounding that oil spill, we inhale these uh, volatile hydrocarbons. We are living in that region for a long time, so he will be affected definitely. And the other reason is that when you directly contact with this oil spill, so some of the hydrocarbons may also inject through your body. That's the one thing. And the second thing is if you eat the sea contaminated food, for example, fish or prawns, whatever, if they are affected by this oil spill, and if you are eating that uh, seafood, again you will be, you know, your bio through bioaccumulation, you will be directly affected by the. Is ice